Oklahoma State Extension Livestock Marketing Specialist Daryl Peel is our cattle market analyst this week. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says the January 1st inventory of cattle and calves in the country was the largest in six years. The estimate of 93.6 million head was about 1.7 million more than a year ago. Texas led the nation, holding more than 13% of American cattle and calves. Nebraska was second with nearly 7%, but it did have more cattle on feed than any other state. The rebuilding of the U.S. herd has been taking place since 2014 and helped push December's retail value for all fresh beef to its lowest level in 33 months. Daryl joined us from Stillwater Wednesday morning. We began by asking for his thoughts on the USDA's latest estimates. Uh, this report, some things were kind of as expected, uh, but there were also some surprises in this, in this report. Uh, U.S. all cattle inventory was up 1.8%. That's pretty close to what we expected. Uh, but the beef cow number came in a little stronger than expected. Um, uh, USDA is telling us now that in 2016, we added a, a little over a million head of cows. That's up about 3.5%. Uh, they did make some revisions to the 2016 numbers, and so they're now saying 2015's expansion was a little smaller smaller than we earlier thought uh, and put more of it in, in 2016. Uh, beef replacement heifers was up uh, about 1.2%. Uh, that's bigger than I expected. I really thought we'd see the replacement heifers pull back a little bit uh, in line with the idea that we're topping out on expansion. This would suggest that we're going to see some, some more expansion going forward. Uh, the, the estimated feeder supply from the other inventory categories was up about 2.2%, again, based on the revisions. Last year, coming into, this, uh, into 2016, we had a feeder supply that was about 5.6% bigger than a year ago. So it's, it's up this year, but not up as much as it was a year ago. What do you notice when you look at Nebraska's numbers? Nebraska's numbers were uh, somewhat similar, uh, different in some areas. The all cattle inventory for Nebraska uh, was actually unchanged. It was reported at exactly the same level as a year ago. Beef cows were up 3.7%. Uh, the number of replacement heifers was down 1.3%, uh, so a little bit different there. Uh, the estimated feeder supply in Nebraska was down 1.7%, and the uh, cattle on feed inventory, uh, in this report, of course, it's all feedlots, not just the larger feedlots that are in the monthly report, and that was down 2% from one year ago. So if there's further expansion in 2017, Daryl, that would require some profitability in the feedlot, right, for those guys to still want to play the game? Uh, that's right. I mean, uh, you know, it, it, it all hinges on those adjustments. Um, you know, this report is really uh, long term in nature. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't change things too much for 2017, but I think, especially from a cow calf perspective, it really kind of changes how you view what we expect in 2018 and 2019 at this point. Meaning? Well, you know, again, the. Uh, the idea that we're going to continue with more expansion. I was all set for the idea that we would uh, really slow down expansion. We might see some expansion in 2017, but pretty minimal. This report, to make sense of the heifer numbers, uh, and you know, they break that replacement heifer number into two categories, really. There's the, the heifers that are going to have calves this year, and then the lightweight calves that we're saving for, uh, really, for next year. Uh, and the number of, of heifers expected to calve is such that we it looks like we're going to see uh, another 1.5% herd expansion in 2017. And so, again, the numbers are kind of fixed for, for 2017 as far as feeder supplies and feedlot production and beef production. But what this really does is says that we're going to continue expanding not only through 2018, but now on into 2019 more than likely. Analyze for me what we've seen in market price movements before that report and what we've seen since. Well, you know, from the low last fall, uh, we had a nice rally and across the board in feeder and fed cattle prices and, and beef prices for that matter. Um, uh, through the fourth quarter and coming into this year, we've actually had very strong, somewhat stronger than expected fed cattle prices. Uh, we may in fact be putting in the seasonal peak a little bit early. Uh, it's possible that, we've, that we're at it or very close to it and that we, uh, you know, that we'll, we'll not see a, a peak later in the first quarter like we often expect to. Um, so, you know, again, we're, we're going to go forward from here. I think mostly sideways with these prices, given that we've rallied back to a level that seems to make some sense. Um, I see 2017 as largely a sideways year on an average basis. We would probably expect to see some normal seasonality happen in that, depending on what class of cattle you're looking at. Um, but in general, uh, I think kind of holding sort of where we're at. That uh, rally that we saw, was that the opportunity then to lock in some prices at a, a good level? 
I think so. I mean, feedlot margins have improved a lot. Uh, the futures has kind of come around, although there is discounts on the uh, out months. And, and, you know, one of the things that may change, obviously, the cattle on feed report, uh, the monthly cattle on feed report that we got a few days ago, um, really put some pressure on the market with the large placements again in December. Uh, so that puts a little more pressure on the summer months. Uh, this inventory number really shouldn't change any of that. Again, this, uh, this, this annual inventory number is looking well beyond that. But uh, in, in kind of a bearish uh, mood here, at least recently, uh, this may add a little additional pressure to the market. So there's opportunities right now I think you want to take advantage of. Let's close out talking about uh, trade and with the discussion on NAFTA and trade with Mexico, the U.S. does trade both meat and live cattle to and from Mexico. What are the implications of a possible renegotiation of NAFTA or something even worse? Well, you know, uh, NAFTA has been good for agriculture in general and it's certainly been good for the beef industry. Um, the, you know, the U.S. Uh, has about as good a deal as you could hope for under NAFTA conditions. Uh, so I think we've got a lot more to lose potentially than we would certainly have to gain in any renegotiation. Uh, and that's a concern if you start talking about renegotiating to improve some other areas, uh, there's probably going to be some trade-offs. And so I think that's an issue. Obviously, if you do something more extreme like a, a, you know, an import tariff on products, uh, you know, we do have bilateral trade of beef now with Mexico. Uh, a tariff would impact flows coming in. Um, it would very likely lead to retaliatory tariffs on products going out. Uh, and, and, and of course we import live cattle as too, which would be affected by that. One of the things that I think is important to keep in mind is, is that if we disrupt the flow of, of, of product out, it's not just beef that will be important in the U.S. market. Uh, Mexico is a major market for pork and poultry products and any sort of uh, tariff that disrupted flows would put a lot of meat, all three meats, beef, pork, and poultry, uh, that's not flowing out of the country back into the U.S. market. And that would put a lot of pressure, at least for a period of time, in the domestic market relative to those, uh, uh, that sudden increase in supplies available in the U.S.